Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, uh, talking Ohio State uh, with Tony Gerdeman from the Ozone. And uh, we always enjoy the discussion with Tony. And, of course, the Buckeyes have their spring game coming up this weekend, unlike Wisconsin and Michigan, and others are added to the list. Ohio State will proceed with a spring uh, game there at the Shoe. Tony, how you doing tonight? Pretty good. Thanks for having me. Definitely. So it's always a good time. We've got the quarterback situation that we have talked to death. Now, finally, we're going to have at least the public. You go out to the practices uh, and get to see a little bit right there. But the public is finally going to have something to go on. Because right now, I tell you, and you know this better than I do, if we held a poll, I think the Dwayne Haskins lead in the per in the public perception mind is a lot greater than what it actually might be because of the Michigan game. And, and rightfully so, but, um, you know, those guys are taking reps in practice and Joe Burrow will have something to say about this. Yeah. And, you know, quarterbacks coach Ryan day was asked how much that Michigan game means this year for Dwayne Haskins and the entire quarterback race. And day said that was last year, you know, what have you done for me lately? And that's the, you know, they're not being measured on last year. What that does do for them is it lets them know what Dwayne Haskins is capable of. But if he doesn't show that this spring, then it doesn't matter what he did. So, yeah, people, that's – I mean, we we don't get to see anything anymore in, in practice. So, you know, we talked to Urban Meyer on April 2nd and then talked to him again on April 11th. And so it, it's been a wide stretch and nobody else is really wanting to talk about the quarterbacks. So, you know, um, Meyer said yesterday on – you know, that – Things are still, it's a three-man race between Dwayne Haskins, Joe Burrow, and even Tate Martell. Um, I was talking to somebody today, uh, not, you know, a source, I guess you would say. Um, Joe Burrow looked really good this past week. Uh, it, it feels like a situation where I, I guarantee he's even said this. He's, he's annoyed by the people who think he's going to transfer, who are waiting for him to transfer. He gets asked, he was asked uh, a few weeks back, like, how do you proceed in, with practice and also scout out schools that you could transfer to? And he's like, you know, no, I'm, I'm at Ohio state and this is my, my focus right now. So he's, he's got a lot to prove to um, you know his team and everything and the coaches, but he's, he's just, um, this is sort of what he, this is what he's always wanted to do. This is his pretty much his last chance to show it. He's, more motivated than maybe anybody else just because of everything being said. And then you've got Tate Martell who will play this year, but I don't think anybody thinks he'll be the starter. So they're giving him a bunch of reps, most likely in preparation to play, but not to start because, you know, with, with Joe Burrow, I mean, he brings up the transfer talk. So, you know, that that's out there. He graduates in May. And if you cloud the situation even more with a third quarterback, that's probably not going to be the best thing to keep Joe Burrow around, especially if nobody has won the job by the time spring football is over. Now it's a, it's a three man race instead of a two man race. And maybe he would just, you know, have the decision made for him that, you know what, since there is so much confusion here, I'm going to go somewhere where it's clearer. Tony, the one line scouting report seems to be that Dwayne Haskins, of course, proved it against Michigan in seven passes and some of them very crucial. And we've talked about those in the past. And for people that watch this, I'm guessing you watch the Michigan game. So, you know what we're talking about. Uh, the stereotype, I don't want to go there, but in regards to color would be that Dwayne Haskins would be a better athlete. But in actuality, Joe Burrow is the better runner. And when I keep hearing better runner and because I haven't seen Burrow play, except for I've seen the 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 mop up duty and I've seen the spring game before is better mean meaning faster or JT Barrett's style better and that he just has a feel for it. And then of course, Tate Martell, his one line scouting report is he's kind of the Tim Tebow. He could be a power type of running quarterback. Well, Martell is the quickest of them all and the, the fastest of them all. Hmm. Um, Joe Burrow is the most like JT Barrett. He's the most determined runner. He's a pretty good runner. Rushed for over a thousand yards as a high school senior. Is a dual threat quarterback, even though he threw for you know sixty touchdowns as well. Whereas Dwayne Haskins is, is um, mobile enough to get out of trouble. Out of trouble, he ran for you know had a twenty-two yard, twenty-three yard scramble against Michigan last year. So he would prefer to throw the ball. 
Joe Burrow will do either. And you wonder if um, Burrow's similarities in playing style to JT Barrett would, if all things are equal, make maybe him the guy because it would be less change for any for for the for the rest of the team but the rest of the team is also looking for a change they want to throw the ball more the running backs want to have more carries Um, so like everybody is looking forward to the way the new offense is going to be and i don't know how much different it would be under burrow but you would think that the passing game would would improve, even though JT Barrett is arguably the best quarterback in Ohio State history, but he had limitations. And they don't necessarily feel that, even though they don't admit about they, they won't admit JT Barrett has limitations at Ohio State. These other quarterbacks don't necessarily have those same arm limitations. So they'll be more passing. Um, but yeah, Burrow is the guy that is the most like JT Barrett on and off the field. All right, so Josh Allen, who's going into the NFL draft, he's reported to be able to throw the ball 90 yards. Uh, We saw Cardell Jones and have seen him more recently in flip-flops throw at 70 at the spring game. So who's the guy? Is there a separation in arm strength? Is In in the yardage distance, I think that's so overrated. Uh, It's more about can you make that out? Can you throw that ball all the way across the field? on those out routes and beat that cornerback who's got the angle. So is there a guy that has the edge in arm strength? Um, probably Dwayne Haskins. You know, every every spring game at, at halftime, they have the long distance throw with Cardale will be there and JT and, and all of all of the quarterbacks on hand will will compete. So I would I don't know if that's going to happen this time around, but I would expect that Dwayne would win that. Uh, maybe not over Cardale, who might <laughs> – he likes to defend his title. Um, but yeah, Haskins has the strongest arm, but the other two guys aren't lacking, and they've only gotten stronger as, as they've been in the program. And that's that's where the upgrade over JT Barrett will be seen for sure. We got Tony Gerdeman on the line from the ozone.net uh, talking Ohio State football, the spring game, of course, April 14th, this Saturday, and we'll talk about the time in just a second. Um uh, Elsewhere on the offense, the offensive line seems to be sewn up. Uh, your thoughts about uh, where things stand and who should we should expect to see mm-hmm. all things considered if people stay healthy week one, September 1st. Yeah, right now there's there's a lot of guys. Um, the depth is getting better. They pretty much have their their starting five set. And as I think about it in my head, you'll, you will have um, three seniors, two of them fifth-year seniors, which they like. Uh, a fourth year uh, or a true sophomore at right tackle Thayer Munford, who Meyer said had, had earned the job this uh, just this past week. He said he earned the job. Now he'll have to continue to compete for it in fall camp when they get uh, Brandon Bowen back, who started the season last year as the right guard, broke his leg and, and it was out for the season, but he'll come back and compete for the right tackle spot. Left guard, you have Michael Jordan, who's who's been there for three years as a starter. And Isaiah Prince slides over from right tackle to left tackle. He's a senior. So very even though you know they only return like two and a half starters, they do have um guys who have been in the program for a while. Brady Taylor is a fifth year senior taking over for Billy Price. He was the backup to Pat Elfline. He was the backup to Billy Price. So he, he's experienced in that he's seen everything, hasn't played a lot, plays in you know blowouts, which you know, there's been quite a few. So he's gotten time that way, um, but he's sort of uh, stepped up and, and taken that job as the team center and as Urban Meyer calls it, the apex of the offense. All right, talking Ohio State football with Tony Gerdeman. You can join him on the ozone.net. And Tony, before we jump to the defense in a couple specific positions, you, Shannon Summers, others from uh, your your network there help me out a whole bunch. So uh, I'm going to give you a little time. Just give us a quick rundown of where people can find you you've got a number of podcasts going and all sorts of other stuff yeah you can find everything at the ozone.net you go there and you know covering the the team daily um we've got podcasts three or four podcasts a week you can catch my podcast which is called Across the field every wednesday and right during when it's busy we got we we do a wednesday show a friday show you know shannon's got his show the silver bullets podcast and every Monday is the um, we start off with um, 
another podcast. <laughs> so we've got um, just several, three or four every week to get your Buckeye fix, and it's all, you know, more than you could almost want. <laughs> and, and the personnel uh, breakdowns on the site are tremendous and really yeah. get me caught up to date on everything. So speaking of which, let's get to the defense. Uh, Jordan Fuller was second on the team in tackles last year with 62 total stops, two interceptions, but it's who's going to play next to him that uh, still maybe not causing concern, but is up in the air. Yeah, and Jordan Fuller played the the deep safety spot last year. He is moving over to the field safety spot, which will um, it covers the, the slot receiver. That's where Damon Webb played last year. So you've got they they they're completely comfortable with Jordan Fuller, even though he's moving to a new position. But he's played very well this spring. So now replacing him, they've got three sophomores, and this is the guy who is is the deep safety. He's the Malik Hooker, you know, playing that spot. So. It's it's a very it's the last line of defense. They've got three guys: Isaiah Pryor, who is a sophomore high school All American. They they I think they want him to win the job because he's the most like Fuller, the most like Hooker, just a, a supreme athlete, can cover a lot of ground. Uh, Jocelyn Wint is a redshirt sophomore from the same high school as Curtis Samuel, so they're starting to build a pipeline there, and he's played well this spring. And then Brendan White is another sophomore who is the son of former Buckeye William White, who came in as has played linebacker, wide receiver, and safety at Ohio State. So those are the three guys. They're waiting for somebody to step up and win the job. I would um, I would think at this point it would be Isaiah Pryor, but the fact that you know, dude, that they haven't said that yet, and they've got one practice left to go. So it seems like it's still anybody's job. But he he would seem to be the guy with the most potential there. All right, Tony Gerdeman on the line from the Ozone.net. Uh, of course, this is Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, and we talk to the best bloggers and broadcasters across the nation, such as Tony right here. So before we let you go, Tony, I know you've got a bit short on time. So for Buckeye fans that don't watch and read during the offseason, but they watch all the games in the fall, then maybe check in on the spring game. Of course, we've got the quarterback battle. Is there one other little nugget that you think people should focus on? Uh, I'll be watching the linebacks just because there's so many and the one starter that they had from last year, tough Borland is out right now with, uh, with an Achilles tendon injury. He won't be back until September. So there's basically three jobs up for grabs right now. And you've got three or four former five-star guys, you know, in the mix, you've got other, you know, players who have played in um, certain roles and packages and it's very wide open right now. Players are moving all around. They want to find the best three linebackers, and then they'll figure out where they play best in that trio. So that's what I'll be watching, those three guys. Um, you know, Also, the defensive ends, because they're replacing, they're replacing three NFL guys. But they might actually be even more talented this year and maybe more concise in the guys that they'll be playing. Although, don't expect Nick Bosa to play much in a spring game. And, and actually, don't expect much of any of the starters to play much in the spring game. But, you know, we'll get to see some quarterbacks, hopefully, uh, if it's enough. And, of course, from a production standpoint, Sam Hubbard, the, the guy that's going to be probably missed most with 13 and a half tackles for loss and seven sacks, who's sneaking on to most boards in the first round, something in, in that range. He's kind of on the edge, isn't he, Tony? Yeah, literally and figuratively. Um, yeah, I've seen him most of, you know, mostly at the, the end of the first round, the top of the second, a guy who – disappointingly ran in the 4H, 4.9s at, at the pro day, and he, he was not happy about that. But if you watch him play, he can cover ground better than most defensive ends. You know, he's a high school safety, so he's got lateral quickness, and he's uh, he's always in the – he always does exactly what he's asked, never has to be told twice, smart kid, and is the kind of guy who will do whatever it takes and and, and does it well and does it right. And I think that's – a coach's dream, I guess you would say. And so, Tony, real quick, uh, there's uh, uh, a situation involving thunderstorms that are possibly pretty severe in the Midwest, has caused Wisconsin, Michigan, and others to shut down their spring game. So what is the latest that you're hearing concerning game time? Well, it was slated for about 1.30. Um, that may not be the case anymore. They'll let us know Friday morning. They'll make an announcement on if the time has been pushed back, it seems like it will be pushed back. So they're going to wait until sometime tomorrow 
morning, late morning to announce because uh, they, they want to have the best idea possible of where this maybe a three hour window is to play the game. So I would expect it to be pushed back. Urban Meyer already tweeted, you know, be prepared fans for uh, the, the timing to be pushed back. So, yeah, I don't think it'll be 145 anymore unless something drastic changes or dramatic changes in the um, the forecast. All right, Tony, enjoy the game, if that's what we can call it. Um, enjoy the work out there at the stadium. And, of yeah. course, uh, we hope you stay dry as well and everyone else. Uh, we appreciate Me you too. stopping by. <laughs> Thanks.